everybody, welcome to today's Django Challenge song. It's Belleville. Let's get started. It's one, six, two, five. But in this case, we want to do this. That F diminished is kind of nice. Now, honestly, in many charts, it'll just say B minor seven. It'll just say one, six, two, five. But when you listen to the recording, you'll hear that, that flat three dim. And it's almost like doing this. Almost like a descending. There I'm playing F sharp minor. And then like rhythm changes, this is often a sub. Rhythm changes, you'll do this. At F, F dim. I did at D slash F sharp and then descending like I'm doing the three right. note. D slash F sharp and then here's that F dim and then E minor seven to the A seven. That's a beautiful pattern. That would work really well for Bill to do this. D slash C, G slash B. I'm getting fancier than I wanted to. G minor slash B flat, and then D six, A seven, and D. Okay, let's go through those chord shapes and do this. You know what I mean? It creates a really pretty voice sure. lady. Actually, actually, let's all do this. Let's all be the bass player. D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, F. It's chromatic, E, and then A. So we have this. E. Now dig this, D, C, B, flat. That's G minor with a B flat and then uh, D A D. And then when I put the chords to that bass line, we have this D6, D sharp dim, E minor 6, F, these are three note shapes, F dim, D slash F sharp, F dim, E minor 7 to A7. D6, this may be new for you, D slash C, get playing around, playing around the bass, and then G slash B, here's, here's a D triad by the way, if you, if you haven't done this, D, put the C in the bass, the flat seven, that's D slash C, really it's D7 slash C. D's, the C's and the, the flat sevens in the bass. And then the G slash B, we love this, of course, from Jangology. And then minor it. I'm doing four notes just to show you, but you could just do three notes for rhythm guitar. And then one, five, one. I'm gonna go D six. Did you get that, everybody? D, G slash B. G minor slash B flat. Just that one note changes. The third goes from the B to the B flat. That These stay the same, because that's just root fifth octave. But the third is here. And then flat the third. And then D6. I'm doing D6 nine. The B section. I, I did put a D7 there as a lead-in chord into G minor six, the minor four. And then two bars. D6, 9, F sharp, 6, G dim, G minor, 7, C sharp, 9, F sharp, 6, and A7. That B section's a little bit tricky. We're going to have some fun navigating through it. I'm going to go back to the B section, but, you know, it's important that you think rhythm. I mean, that might mean that you have to count a little bit. 
but that's, you know, really, if you were to learn a Django solo, it's all about the timing and, and the phrasing. When so. I actually perform it live, I do this one. One. I just shift down the length of the string. One. One. Four, one. And two, three, four, one, two, and. And then. One. One. And two, three, four, one, two, and. Four, one. It's the same thing. Okay, I'm gonna stop there, but you could do it with one finger. If you're like, oh, that's too easy, just go one. Mm. One. And that's a, that was a D major triad. I mean, you know, again, just very simple. You could just do it like this. I don't wanna hold it as a chord. I'd rather kind of break it up into single notes. But I'm kind of doing this. I'm saying is have fun with it. Okay, let's do the B section. The melody is this one. Mm. So it starts. In, it's just a G minor six arpeggio, which of course you know for soloing that's going to be our choice arpeggio. But we have this rhythm one and three four one two and and then F sharp. Mm. And that's kind of like an F-sharp minor pentatonic. I like talking about this because it's really cool. The chord is D major, but you can play F-sharp minor penta. Kind of a pretty, really pretty sound. I'm always talking about that sound when I teach uh, modern-y jazz stuff and bossa nova, because uh, it's used quite a bit. Melody, the girl from Ipanema. So, mm, against the D chord. So it's kind of creating like a D major nine color. Uh, so the melody on the B section so far, just those four bars. One, two, three, four, one, and three, four, one, and one, and three, four, one. And this is where it modulates. I want to talk about this. It stays on that same note, that C sharp, and it acts as like a pivot note, because now we're in the key of F sharp, and now that's the five, not the seven. It was a seven of D major, but now it turns different color. Now it's a five of F sharp, okay? And in, in, in this case, I'm just simplifying the rhythm a little bit. This is very similar in the fake books. It's almost like you're playing du ambiance. That rhythm, da 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 da, uh, da 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 da. You might see it a little bit different depending on the book or whatever, but you have to understand Django recorded this many times. You're gonna hear different rhythms all the time. So just to make it a little bit easier. Okay. And then this. Then the modulation, F sharp to the A. Except I, I just slid for dramatic purposes. Mm. Or you get tremolo. Mm. And then, mm. octaves. Mm. So start at the B and play the rest of the song. One, two, three, four, one. One. I treat the I treat the first measure. I don't worry about the second chord. Just D. It's just D. That's all. And then measure two, E minor. 
I'm don't worry about the A7, just think E minor. So it's kind of just face value. But you have D, da 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 dum. And then E minor, da da dum. It should be very catchy, and that's what you want. And then the next chord, not back to D, but this is where the three comes in. F sharp minor, da da dum. And then right here is, this is, you're gonna learn my favorite substitution right here, G minor. That's a substitute for, that's really E half diminish. And some charts will actually say E minor seven flat five. Well, E minor seven flat five equals G minor six. It's a very pretty sound. And if you have an A chord, everybody hit the open A string and then play a G minor on top of that. Or listen to this. See, it's kind of dark. And so that that's the effect that you, it's a suspended. It, you, there's no third. It's the D is a sus. Here, I'll I'll name it for you. Here, here's A in the bass, like a dominant. A is a five. We're in the key of D. You have G, the flat seven. B flat. What is that? Flat nine. Good. The D is the four. That's called the sus because it wants to go to the three. And then the E is the fifth. So this is a great trick. On top of an A7 chord, play G minor six. Here's A7. Okay. So that gives that a beautiful, darker flavor of a dominant chord. And I'm gonna show it to you with triads, but I'll, I'll yell it out. Measure one, D major. Measure two, E minor. Measure three, F sharp minor. Measure four, G minor. And I would play six. So we have this. And then I go backwards. Probably the number one scale most people will use. Again, the D blues scale, that's what I'm saying, is have fun just getting bluesy, you know, that way you don't have to overthink <laughs> too. But it, I, I personally like to mix and match some bluesy licks, oftentimes at the end of the phrase. And then I like to do the sweet licks, which is kind of outlining the changes. You know, just outline, and then a blues lick. And then some blues licks thrown in. So I like to mix and match, but for practicing's sake, I just say, hey, just practice a blues scale for all eight bars. But I have to tell you, I was doing more than just this. I was doing kind of what I call the hybrid scale, blue scale, composite scale, but it could also just be thought of as Dorian with a flat five. So do this with me. Here's D. This, flat three. Flat three, two, one. Da, da, da. It's a very bluesy sounding lick, but it's not just a blue scale. And then target the fifth and do the same thing. And then target the flat three 
F, and then do the same motif, melodic motif. And then you can go to the major if you want it. So you have this. Mm. So is it minor or is it major? That's what I like to mix and match between the major and the minor. You get that really, you know, playful. Very Charlie christian -y as well. And there I'm following that bass. And then the chorus, uh, you know, don't lose track of the melody. The melody is so important. It's a neat scale. It's a Dorian mode with a flat five, but then you gotta add that major third in to make it a little bit happy. And that's where you get those little Charlie Christian isms too. So basically, like, yeah, Dave. Oh, it seems like a, a D major pentatonic scale kind of worked over. Absolutely, well. no, that's in. Sorry, that's the hybrid scale. The D. See, this is when you. Uh, sorry, the composite scale. When you take the D major penta, one, two, three, five, six, and you combine it with the minor, that's where you get all of that good stuff. You get the, t you get, here's a major, here's minor, here's combine. You know what I mean? It gets really kind of slippery, kind of bluesy, chromatic-y almost. But it, it's, it comes down to me as like a Dorian with a flat five and the major three. I don't know, just because I'm thinking of this shape right here off the D minor. But I'm, I want the major three too. See, I want that major, especially in this. But I want the flat three as well. And so guess what? Guess what else comes out of this? The diminished, the diminished arpeggio off of D. So to create some cool tension, and I wrote this on that etude. Well, again, Django, you can hear Django do that. He's like. To create some tension. So you have major, minor, um, diminished. You know, all off the root of D. That's what I think is nice. It's, it's that, that way you don't have to overthink things. What I was gonna say, and what I did say, I should follow up on this, I said there's two blue scales. If you're thinking just traditional minor blues. The other one is B minor. B minor is equivalent to D major. The pentas, but then you have that blue note. See, the blue note of the B minor is that F natural. So is it F or is it F sharp? You have both. So do this off of B minor. I'm thinking of it seventh fret. I'm starting with my pinky on D. I'm doing this. And I'm just stopping on D. I don't want to stop on B as much, even though I like that six degree. And you'll hear Django do this. You know, he'll hang on that six degree quite a bit. That six degree in the style is very important to lean on. Uh, but again, that's the B minor blue scale. <laughs> Mix and match. So here's a quick trick, and I know that, that um, I go through this at least in my, my, my other classes, but not often this, so. Check this out. section just for fun. Right here. And then right here.
outlining. D blues. D major. Minor. Maybe diminish. Major. Blues. You can just solo like that all day long. I love that. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> so that's just one beautiful approach. Uh, D, you know, again, I'm just going to re reiterate that you could think D major, which is B minor pentatonic, but add the blue note in. That's why it's easier just to think these B minor. And then move it up for guitar players and mando fretted instruments. Go up three frets. Now you're on D minor. And then go back and forth. Mix and match to how you're hearing these flavors. Throw in some of that diminished arpeggio for fun. And now it's right on D to create some tension. It's almost like you're superimposing against this progression, this. You know, tension. So I'm going D diminish against the you know, diminish. And then mix and match. That's kind of, again, what's really fun. So again, I'm hopefully giving you guys some uh, new ideas along with some old ideas, but it never hurts to, to you know, revisit these concepts um, from triads, outlining, targeting, having a little path, to blue scale, pentatonic ideas, to just good old arpeggios, you know, just do 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 do. Um, you know, just outlining too, and that was that was, I did some of this in that etude. So I'm trying to mix and match for the, for you guys for this particular etude. I'm trying to mix and match some of these ideas, maybe not as much as the blues scale stuff. So let's take a look at this and just uh, go through it. Um, if you guys don't have any questions on that stuff. Embellishment, ornamentation, one. You, you can hear the sequence. Okay, and I'm just traveling up the length of the string, but hopefully again you hear this. If you wanted to go further. You know, it, it's keeping a sequence going. So that's, musical sequences are nice. And, but the timing is this, one, two, three, four, one. And that was measure four there. So what I did there on measure three to measure four is I went chromatic, which is right out of the kind of that hybrid composite blue scale. Da 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 da. I'm going, and then the pentatonic, B minor, which is also, of course, D major pentatonic. So we have this. And then that colorful note there, if you look at the arpeggio that comes after it, this. That's G minor six arpeggio, or you could think of it as E half diminished, E circle line through it. That means E half diminished. Typically, people are playing E minor seven chord. It's okay. You might say, but isn't that B flat clash with the B? Yeah, but that's the blue scale. That B flat against the B. So, you know, that's what it sounds like. It's really colorful. But listen to measure three to measure four. Just adds some tension and again that's G minor 6 or E half dim however you want to think of it and then uh, going on to finish out on the little turnaround lick I threw on this lick and it's a little rhythmic thing and I 
off stop there. That was, of course, uh, the next A section, and that's very much out of the Django flavor. But notice the sequence and notice the chromatic. I'm kind of thinking D, and then up half step, tritone, E flat nine, and then back to D. Okay, that's that's a half step side slipping. And there again is that use of the diminished seven arpeggio. Again, I'm not worried about the exact, you know, how it fits to each chord. I'm, for this rhythm changes stuff, I'm thinking like the bigger picture. We're in D, <laughs> that's all. You know, you, of course we have one, six, two, five, but you know, again, you could do D diminished to create that tension. So again, on measure nine, it was this. And notice that the pulsing is very important because you'll hear Django do that lit a lot. And I'm always saying pulsing, that, that, that. It's nice, it's good, it swings to get that quarter note. So it's one, two, three, four, diminish. Yes. 